All right, I think we'll get started. So on behalf of the Independence Chamber of Commerce in the City of Independence, welcome to First Friday. Before we get started and we hear from our four great speakers this morning, we would like to hear from our business sponsor. Our business sponsor this morning for First Friday is Coffeeville Regional Medical Center. As I always say, as our business sponsor, they paid for your breakfast, so you can give them the big thank you for that. And um, at this time, I would like to welcome Coffeeville Regional Medical Center's brand new CEO, but not a new face, to CRMC, Lori Rexwinkle. Thank you. Can you hear me? Check, check. Thank you, Lisa. I, I have strict orders to only speak for five minutes. So with that opening, I would like to say thank you so much for allowing us to be your sponsor today. And thank you for this opportunity to be in Independence. I'm a native of Coffeeville, grew up in Coffeeville, and graduated from the high school and college there. But some of my biggest mentors have been in Independence, one of them being from K-State and Research. And he's not here right now, but I bet some of you might know him. His name is Brian Swisher, and he just retired from K-State Extension Office. So um, without any further ado, I'm going to get started. Again, it's a pleasure to be here and an opportunity for me. As the CEO, I've been at Coffeeville Regional Medical Center for 16 years in various different positions as a nurse, and um, so grateful to be there and the opportunity today. So we're going to talk real briefly about Coffeeville Regional Medical Center and wanting to be your partner in health. We're a regional health care system serving over 45,000 people annually. We've kind of listed some of the counties here that we serve. We were established in 1949, and next year is our 70th uh, year and birthday celebration. So we're extremely happy about that. We have the gold seal of quality for, joint, uh, for hospital accreditation, and that's joint commission. We're very proud of that. It's uh, committed to meeting the highest performance standards of very rigorous survey accreditation, and we are super proud of that. We have a 24-7 emergency department. We have ADER beds, um, include trauma, cardiac, orthopedics, gynecologic, and behavioral health. We also um, serve over 10,000 visits every year. We're staffed with board certified and eligible uh, ER physicians 24-7, and super proud of that. That's Dr. Robbins from Caney and Dr. Russell Anderson. We have women's health service. We have over three, uh, three OB-GYNs that are practicing currently, the Gita Sandu Women's Health Unit. Dr. Gita Sandu um, opened that health unit many, many years ago and had many, many deliveries. So we are grateful for her and that naming of that unit. We have digital mammography, 3D, 4D ultrasound, um, osteoporosis screening, childbirth education, and lots of other items for our women's health services. Those are our new O oh Baby gowns, and we have so many great pictures of those coming in through social media, and they're just a a pleasure to see, and you got to smile when you see those new babies. Orthopedic services. We have a member of um, our new member, our newest member, is sitting at our Coffeeville Regional Medical Center table right here, Mr. John Line. He's practiced um, in orthopedics for over 20 years, is that correct? And uh, we are so happy to have him on board. That's just a recent item, and so happy to have that. We have arthroscopic um, total knee replacements, hand surgery, foot and ankle. That's Dr. Menon, um, Sunil Menon right there. And then Ron Dunkel is a nurse practitioner that is also helping us with the orthopedic services. We also are proud to have our neurosurgery, Dr. Jerry Sue and Dr. Michelle Perry, um, working in that area. We can do kyphoplasties, anterior fusions and cervical disectomies, uh, posterior lumbar fusions and micro disectomies. We also are certainly proud of our cancer treatment center, Dr. Agundepe. Um, who is our medical oncologist, and Dr. Nathan Yui, who is actually a Coffeeville native. His father was a pathologist there at Coffeeville Regional Medical Center for many, many years, and he wanted to give back to our uh, area and in our cancer treatment services. Wound care services, we offer advanced therapies to patients who suffer from chronic non-healing wounds, and we also have two hyperbaric treatment centers. That is a non, you do not need a physician referral for that, but you certainly can have one. Dr. Jan, or Dr. <laughs> Shravan Gangula is our medical director. Dr. Miller also helps us with that. He's an OB-GYN, but practiced in the Navy and really is enjoying the wound care services. And then John Line recently went to training and is also going to be helping us. Our hospitalist service, some of you know, may, may know this lady sitting uh, with Dr. Uh, Dr. Hogsett. She is our hospitalist um, and the director of our hospitalist program. 
We are very fortunate to have these three hospitalists. They are very, they are sensational. They have built a lot of compassion and they honestly take care of the patients, the families, and whatever's going on. We really appreciate them. Dr. Ann Hogsett, Dr. Alex Oric from Tulane, and Dr. Josh Wickstand. Interventional radiology. We recently added Dr. David Guchenrenner um, to our program and service line. He has offered up a lot of new procedures, biopsies, pain management, vascular work, chronic pain control, and um, cancer pain control. So he's with us every, uh, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and super guy, so we're happy to have him. We have a very impressive medical staff, over 54 medical providers representing 21 medical specialties. That's, that's a huge um, deal for Coffeyville, Kansas, and a rural PPS hospital. So I'd just like to point that out. Most patients are, and uh, physicians that we've been bringing in as we've been physician recruiting says that um, they are so impressed by that, they, they can't believe that that's all the services lines that we have in Coffeyville. So I would also um, just like to point out our website. I know um, I'm going to speak about Ashley and Melissa a little bit. They are, have been sensational um, in building our new website and trying to keep it up to date, adding some education and everything they have um, done to our website in the last like nine months. So very proud of that and happy to have, be able to show this and showcase this. Our Health Partners Magazine is another um, huge success for us. We produce it every quarter and Ashley and Melissa have taken the lead on that and gotten that out. Some of you may have received that. If you haven't, please let us know so we can get you on the list and get that out. I know we have some items on the table. Thank you, Lisa, and your team for getting those on the table. We also have the service guides, and there's more on that table right over there if there is any other information that we could provide for you. So how am I doing on time, Lisa? I'm wrapping it right up. Okay, am I speaking too fast? We want to be your partner in health. Um, again, I'm excited to be the new CEO. I'm not, I'm not um, new to the hospital by any means, but want you to know that we want to be available to you if there are service lines that you don't have that you'd like to see. We want to hear you. We want to hear your concerns. We want to hear your feedback, and we want to be your partner in health. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Before I, before I um, let go of the microphone, because I kind of like to hold it for just a second longer, I'd like to talk about our people, our folks at the table. Catherine Fisher is our rehab physical therapy director, serving outpatient and inpatient. Melissa Summer and Ashley Tapman works for marketing and advertising. Catherine Cornell is a provider here, a nurse practitioner that works in Independence and Coffeyville, and this is her son, Cohen. And then, see, I got you in, Cohen. Christy Horton is our ER assistant uh, director and does a fantastic job with our staff and, and patients coming in and our employees, so working with those doctors every day. John Line, we mentioned him. Um, he is a PA for us and is working with orthopedic services. We'll be up. He's going to be in Independence Monday afternoons and Tuesdays in the next 30 days. So we're hoping to start that in July. So just wanted you to know what we're bringing back to the community. And if there's anything that we can do for you or however we can serve you, we want to be a part of it. So thank you so much for this opportunity this morning. So as I said before, um, First Friday is co-sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce and the City of Independence. It's free. It's open to the public. It's so nice to see so many of you here this morning. We usually have a packed house, so we're glad about that. Um, we have a few um, announcements to make before I kind of run through the calendar of events. I wanted to introduce a couple of people that are with us this morning that are guests to our community. So you may or may not know that some of our local major manufacturers and our organizations have summer interns that come in in the summertime. And um, we've had the, the summer interns from uh, uh, Textron in particular speak at First Friday. But we have a couple of interns here with us this morning. We have Becky Brown, who is from Textron Aviation. She is a senior in human resources with Oklahoma State. Becky, would you stand up, please? 
And we also have, welcome Becky, stay standing please. And we also have Abby Hebert. She is interning with the City of Independence. She is um, in regional and community planning. She is a junior at K-State, and more importantly, she is my niece. So um, please welcome those two interns. Thank you for being here. And, um, and also, if you know of other interns that are interning in our city, Textron is working on kind of a, a get-together and an opportunity for all the summer interns to network and have a good time together. Be sure and let us know. We're compiling that information. I know there are our interns at SMP and at John Deere, so we'll be getting all of those kids together this summer. So, Also, we have some recognition to take care of. It's always fun to present plaques of recognition and celebration of, of big milestones, and this morning is no different. Um, we are going to be presenting a plaque to Bill White Real Estate in celebration of 40 years of being in business in the community. So at this time, I would like to welcome all of the staff, Tim and Cindy, Bill and Marie, and everyone else that wants to be a part of the plaque presentation to meet me up front. Check, check, check. All right. We got a lot to get done. Okay, so um, I'm going to run through some things real quickly. Um, first of all, I want to say that Bulldog Station has brand new Love Independence shirts, so be sure and check that out. During the month of June, if you um, purchase a shirt, I believe $5.75 goes to the church of your choice. So get down there and get your, um, get your T-shirt. And also, I wanted to remind you that the City of Independence is still doing their strategic planning survey, and um, we want everyone to take that survey. It looks like um, this when you go onto the homepage of ind independenceks.gov, and you want to do that because um, that's the, one of the ways that our city commissioners and our city manager are going to know about our concerns, our thoughts, our ideas as community members. So we need to give our input so that they know where we want to take our community in the upcoming years. So please be sure and get that done. Jim Kelly wanted me to let you know that it's time, even though it's June 1st, it's time to think about July the 4th and raising money for the fireworks display. The fireworks display costs over $15,000, and I'm excited to, to announce that we're only $4,000 and $44 um, short of meeting our goal, so please make a contribution to the um, fireworks display so that we can do it upright on Independence Day. Um, we also have four movie nights scheduled this summer. We always do them on the last Saturday of the month, June, July, August, and September. But in June, we're going to do the fourth Saturday. And um, we're doing something different on that Saturday. It's being sponsored by Textron Aviation and Apricot Lane, and it's teen night. We hear from the high school kids and the middle school kids a lot. They'll say... There are lots of things to do in independence, and they love living in independence. But they'll always say, we'd like more things to do. So we're giving them one more great thing to do, and that's Teen Night. We're showing a PG-13 movie of Jumanji, and we're going to have um, fire hose bowling, human foosball, hopefully some other fun things for the teenagers to do. So if you're between the ages of 12 and 18, um, you're welcome to come down for downtown movie night. We'll also be showing Coco on July 28th, Despicable Me on August 25th, and The Incredibles on September 29th. 
Junk and Gems, that would be the Women for Independence's fundraiser, starts today at noon, goes to 6, tomorrow from 9 to 4. So get out to the 4-H building and support Women for Independence and buy some junk or some gems. And, um, and then also you have just a little bit of time to get in your Zubru tickets. Zubru is tonight from 6.30 to 9.30. Tickets are $30.00. The meal is included in the price of your ticket. It's pulled pork, baked beans, coleslaw, and you also get to test um, 10 great beers from Demo Distributors and contribute to a live and silent auction to raise money. All the money raised will go to train improvements, the miniature train improvements. So Zubru, it's by Monkey Island tonight. You can get your tickets. They're 30 bucks. Farmer's Market is in the morning. Um, it's going very well. Carolyn is in the room. What's going to be fun about tomorrow is the Praise and Worship Band from First United Methodist Church will be the featured entertainment, so that will be fun. Um, we also want to let you know that um, they're going to have live birds. They're going to have quail, turkeys, guineas, and chicks. And there's also local honey, strawberries, lettuce, spinach, pecans, turnips, all kinds of things, baked goods, jellies. So you don't want to miss out on Farmer's Market. Get your recycling taken care of tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Go back to Bulldog Station. You can get your shirt, but before you do, you can participate in a Bulldog Walk where we pick up trash every Saturday morning from 9 to 10 and keep our community looking nice. And um, Tuesday this week, was the um, opening concert for Mid-Continent Band. So put that on your calendars at 8 o'clock every Tuesday through the summer months. You can enjoy music out in the park. Celebrate Independence is next week on Thursday. We have three great speakers talking about three great things that are happening in the community. April Nutt will be um, sharing all the information, the latest and greatest, on Celebration Park, which is at Penn and Chestnut, and we'll give you the, all the updates on that. Um, Brett Kelly, that you saw on the screen up here, um, is going to be talking about YPI and all of the programs that they're doing and some projects that they have on the books. Um, he is their new president. And then Gary Hogsett, our commissioner and pride member, is going to be doing a video presentation or a slideshow presentation of, of um, all of the great love independence um, projects that took place on that day in April. So you won't want to miss that. Get your tickets. They're 10 bucks, and you can call the chamber. The museum's having a fundraiser. It's called um, Bird Houses and Beer. Beer must be very popular. So um, uh, you can get your tickets for that. They're $20 a person, and that's Friday, June the 8th from 7 to 9, so that sounds like fun. Three different times during the summer, Independence Children's Summer Theater will be doing presentations out at the Inge Theater. And um, the first one coming up on June 8th, which will be next weekend, is The Wizard of Oz. And then you'll find Cinderella and Into the Woods later on in the month of June. The um, Little House on the Prairie is having Prairie Days. What's cool about Prairie Days this year is that um, they're going to have the... Um, Baby Grace from the TV series will be there. Her name is Wendy Lee, so you'll want to get out and check that out if you remember all of the Little House on the Prairie um, episodes and you remember Baby Grace. You'll get to see her live and in person. YPI is doing a lot of fun things this summer. Um, they have something called YPI Essentials. Things that are essential to a young professional would be a professional headshot. And um, they're offering that on Monday, June the 11th at the library from 5 to 8. They can come get a free headshot, or they're $5, $5 headshot, that's all but free. And um, they can also get some professional development from Shonda Chambers, and her topic is Getting Unstuck, the Importance of Practicing Gratitude. Can't get any better than that. Um, all Wheels Night's going very, very well. If you haven't been down to All Wheels Night, I encourage you to do so June the 15th. Um, there's going to be music by Night Moves. There's going to be um, food and giveaways and all kinds of great cars, motorcycles, and all kinds of fun stuff. And then when they're done, they do that um, cruise through Indy. And if you haven't watched that happen, you really should because it's, it's a lot of fun. And there's some pretty swanky cars downtown. Um, the library always has a lot of great programming. They're having a fundraiser on June the 15th in the evening, and it's called Literary and Vine. It's a wine tasting, so if you're not a beer fan, you can go to the library for wine and, um, and check that out. So encourage you to support them. And then also we're going to have a little shout out after we're all done about um, the Republican Governors Forum. That is going to be on June the 16th. 
So you can mark your calendars for that. And YPI has some um, professional development luncheons coming up June the 19th. Gary Hogsett will be talking to the group about why independence. July 17th, Chuck Goad will be talking to them about mindful words and why it matters. And then wrapping up the summer on August the 21st will be um, leadership lessons from Charlie Brown, and that's from Jody Hayes. So that should be some good um, professional development for them. And let's see, I think I'm wrapping it up. The last two things I will tell you, um, because you'll miss them if, if we wait until the next First Friday, um, is the First Christian Church is having a fundraiser, and Chris Golden is going to be in concert. And it says that he's been with the Oak Ridge Boys for 17 years. He's played with Restless Heart in Alabama, and he was the 2018 Country Gospel Artist of the Year. And it's a free will offering. It's Sunday, July the 1st at 2 o'clock at the First Christian Church. So get out and, and check out that concert. And then lastly, if you're a golfer, we have our Chamber Golf Tournament on July 14th. So you can make your reservations for that. It is time to start the show. My speakers are all ready. If, um, if there's anything that I've missed or we've gotten incorrect on the program, be sure and let us know. We'll get that all taken care of. Um, but we are going to start our presentations this morning with the um, director of the Children's Library. She's spoken to us before. She is here today to talk to us all about the summer library program. So would you please welcome Charlene Mitchell. Hello, I am Charlene Mitchell, the Children's Director of the Public Library. And uh, just so you know, we do host many exciting events that I will talk about shortly. But first, I want to talk to you about how the library is more than just a building with books. For instance, we have several children and teens that come to our building as a safe haven to get away from possibly family members or some friends. And they know that they are welcomed with open arms, listening ears, and guided support. Independence Public Library also helps many find jobs in and out of our community. And here is an example. Manny Mendoza was born in Independence, Kansas back in 1930, and he was one of nine children. He wanted to practice law, but being Mexican and living in a small town, he thought it would be difficult. In an interview, the interviewer asked Manny what made him think about going to college. He said, and I quote, well, I was probably a little smarter than average. I started to go to the library on my way home because they started to talk about a lot of things I wanted to learn about. I go to the library and pull out books and start reading. I read a book and then put it back. Eventually, the librarian asked if I lived in Independence, and I said yes. She told me I can have a library card and take the book home. I told her I don't want to do that. I'll lose it or something will happen to it. Eventually, I did, but it was a learning process. Later in his life, he, his teachers encouraged him to go to college and eventually was promoted to senior counsel in State Farm in 1985 until his retirement in 2001. And to this day, the Mendoza family is and has been a huge supporter of libraries. Independence Public Library also helps bring families together. One instance is with Gary Hahn, a 75-year-old gentleman, gentleman who lives in New Zealand and found out 20 years ago that his father was from Independence, Kansas. He wanted to learn about where his father lived and what he did when he came to visit us back in 2016. With assistance from Polly and Nancy, they were able to inform him that his father was an American Marine who did pass away back in World War II. When Gary came to visit, they took him around the town showing him places where his father had lived. And he met a living relative still living in Coffeyville, Kansas. Gary Mann has become a member of our library family. So at our library, there are two big programs and events that I would like to promote. One is to support your children and teens this summer by having them register at our summer reading program. The registration begins at our kickoff on June 7th at 5 o'clock with a magician and then some fun musical stations along with some free nachos for everybody. And new this year is our first adult summer reading program. It will begin at, your, at its own kickoff on June 14th at 5 o'clock, which will include a free concert by the Caddy Wampus Band. 
And for every book that you read from June 14th to September 27th, you will be entered into a drawing for a chance to win local prizes. The other event, uh, which... Uh, Miss Lisa spoke about was the Literary Vine Night. Uh, This night is hosted by the Friends of the Library on June 15th at 7 o'clock. For only $30 until June 8th, you will get a sample of 12 different wines, enjoy appetizers, listen to music from Bridget Carson, watch a live painting by Jim Hayward, receive a commemorative wine glass, and a chance to win a stay at Elk City State Park's cabin. The funds earned at this event will go to the children and teen departments and help support purchasing books, activity materials, and more. The prices will go up to $40 starting June 9th, so please purchase your tickets soon at the library or at Sayers Ace Hardware. Instead of me talking about all the rest of the exciting activities and events this summer, I put together a fun video. Now, don't feel like you have to race down all the answers. There are bulletins on the table over here afterwards that you can pick up. (laughs) Join us June 7th for our Children and Teens Summer Reading Kickoff with Magic by Pete, free nachos, and hands-on musical activities. And the following week, join us for our new Adult Summer Reading Kickoff on Thursday, June 14th at 5, featuring the Caddy Wampus Band. The Friends of the Independence Public Library is putting on a wine-tasting fundraiser on June 15th. Join us on our front lawn to try 12 different wines, appetizers, listen to live music by Bridget Carson, and watch a live painting by Jim Hayward. Tickets are available for $30 until June 8th, available at the library. Afterwards, they will be $40, but they will include a commemorative wine glass. Purchase your tickets today. Get ready to work out at our Punk Rock Workouts every Monday at 5.30. It's Sex in the City meets Crafts in the Stacks. Enjoy good company, great food, and fabulous crafts. Ladies, join us and sign up for June 19th and July 17th for just $5 for the cost of materials. On June 28th and July 24th, come to our open mic night on the lawn. Bring a blanket and your works to read, sing, or perform in front of the old library. Party in the 80s at our 80s nostalgia night on July 13th. And if you need a babysitter, drop them off for free upstairs on the third floor so they can have some fun. Every Tuesday at 10.15 to 11 o'clock, and kids can enjoy a 45-minute story time with stories, music, and a themed craft. Toddlers and preschools can have fun on our new parachute every other Friday. We'll have music, creative movement, and fun for all. Tweens and teens enjoy a free musical movie every Monday at 3 o'clock. Also enjoy the free popcorn. Tweens and teens, bring your instruments, share your favorite songs, or listen to what others have to offer at our monthly music club. All ages are invited to our music party by playing our classic music games, Pass the Parcel, Musical Jairs, and Limbo. Ever want to try an escape room? Try to escape our room in a box by solving puzzles and unlocking locks. Join us for three sessions of cardio drumming. Exercise to the beat of your own drum with this heart pump and exercise class. Children and tweens, compose your own music with our Osmo Coding Jam, or try some fun games on our coding app on our iPads. Let's listen in to this boy's beat. Teens, pick from any available song and sing your heart out alone or with a group of friends. Make your own slime using some rocks to squish around. These computer kits will be out all day for you to practice building and to learn coding. Enjoy coding your own classic snake game or Minecraft universe. Bring the family out for a rockin' night with fun, hands-on activities themed to space rocks. We'll look at science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Every Monday in July, learn and practice your acting skills through readers' theater renditions of short, amusing scripts. No need to register. Just join us at 2 o'clock. Enjoy the classic movie Mary Poppins on our big screen with some tasty popcorn. Teens, can you name that tune in five notes? Compete against your friends to find out who recognizes the song fastest as we play our own version of the classic TV game show. Teens, make your own serial xylophone, complete with pretzel mallet. 
Dress up and sip some tea while we play some rock and roll games in our library tea party. Please RSVP. Libraries rock, so let's paint some rocks. Take them home or hide them around independent. Children, tweens, and teens, sign up by July 20th to show the world your talent at our first talent show. Singers, musicians, magicians, artists, dancers, and more are all welcome to register and put a show on for your family and friends on July 27th. Enjoy the updated version of the movie Annie on our big screen while munching on some yummy popcorn. All summer long, kids, tweens, and teens have been earning tickets for reading. Now it's time to use those tickets to play some cool carnival games and win some awesome prizes. Please thank these companies for their support for helping kids read this summer. Um, just so you know, those are not all of the events going on this summer. And again, if there are pamphlets, actually booklets, <laughs> of our events on the table. So, and if you have any questions after this meeting, feel free to uh, talk to me. Thank you. I think it's fair to say they don't sleep at the library. All right, so our next speaker is actually new to Independence. Um, you've already heard the name Brian Swisher a couple times this morning. She is actually Brian Swisher's replacement. So would you please welcome to Independence and to the podium, um, Katie Townsend, who is the new 4-H Youth Development Director. Good morning. I'm excited to be here this morning. Um, I'm not totally new to Independence. I was a product of the Montgomery County 4-H program under Brian Swisher as well. Um, so I'm familiar with your county and your county fair and some of the happenings here. Um, and I'm excited to continue those traditions. Um, I'm a 4-H agent for Montgomery County, but specifically for the Wildcat Extension District. We have four counties, um, Labette, Montgomery, Crawford, and Wilson County, so that we serve. That means that we have um, over 12 extension agents that are here to serve you. Barbara Ames, one of our family and consumer science agents, is here in the back of the room this morning. Um, and just an example of what we can do for you. Um, we have agents that specialize in wildlife. Um, I was with our wildlife agent yesterday, and she was getting some pictures of um, some animals and some tracks to identify. As we were at 4-H camp, we have somebody that does some row crop consulting, some livestock consulting. Um, some of our agents help with sewing camps and uh, pre testing your uh, pressure cookers and just a wide variety of things. So I encourage you to come visit us because we can find uh, the people to help you um, with just about anything. Um, as she mentioned, I replaced Brian Swisher in November. Um, for those of you that are familiar with our 4-H program, we have uh, 250 youth in Montgomery County, so from county line to county line that are involved in 4-H. Uh, that's seven community clubs. Those community clubs meet once a month on a wide range of projects. So they meet once a month. They have a president and a vice president, a treasurer and a secretary that kind of sit up at the front of the room. And those youth are expected to run their own meeting. Uh, they do flag ceremonies and gavels. And we really um, want them to be able to control a room. I would expect my 4 Hers to be able to stand up here and speak this morning just as I'm speaking and to be able to control the room. Um, and that's something that we really value in 4-H. Some of the other things that they do at their club meetings is they plan charity things. Uh, they will go into our nursing homes and deliver valentines or take cookies or go Christmas caroling. They participate in the Christmas parades. They also work on a variety of projects. Um, those will be on exhibit down at the Montgomery County 4-H Fair here at the end of July. I strongly encourage you to come visit us at Riverside Park July 26th through the 30th. Down there, you'll be able to see the kids exhibit their livestock. They'll be showing everything from swine to poultry, rabbits, goats, and cattle. Um, and then on our inside exhibits, you'll be able to see the sewing projects that we made at sewing camp this year. The kids made pillowcases, and a few made some skirts. They're very proud of those. They would love for you to come see them. They also do cooking. They build rockets. Um, you know, the possibilities are really endless in 4-H on what the kids 
if they want to do it, um, we will find a way to help them build it and then exhibit it at the Montgomery County Fair. It's all free. Um, just come walk through our fairgrounds. The kids would love to show you around and show you what they've been doing. Some other things that they do um, is camp, for example. I just got back from camp last night um, up in Manhattan. We were on K-State's campus. The kids get a tour K-State campus. It's a great camp. Um, I pack tomorrow and leave again on Sunday. We're going to go camping up at Rock Springs 4-H Center. Um, And this is a little bit rougher camp. We'll be camping without AC and some of those luxuries. Uh, But there's some things that the kids love. We also have a local camp down at Cedar Bluff in Coffeyville. And that's for our younger kids, um, the 7 to 12, that maybe they don't want to go spend several nights away from home. So we have some opportunities there. Um, With 230 kids in Montgomery County 4-H, I really rely on volunteers. I cannot teach them all myself. Um, There are several people in the crowd here this morning that have helped us before, whether that's coming to sewing camp and making sure nobody runs their finger through the sewing machine um, or... Um, helping us make snacks for meetings or whatever the case might be. So I guess my request is if you have a talent and you're willing to work with youth, we would love to partner with you to do just about anything. Um, We love to collaborate with other organizations. Um, We have partnered with the library. Um, She's been great to work with. Um, We're going to bring some events to the county fair this year. Um, So we encourage you to come down and check that out because that's open to anybody, not necessarily necessarily just 4-H youth. Um, Just like Barnyard Olympics at the fair, any youth can come down and participate in the events that we have going on, and we'd love to have you. Um, Some other collaboration, I'll give you some examples. We've been working with the Coffeeville Chamber, um, which I know is not independence, but just as an example, um, to get some of their farmer's market things going and to get some of our 4-H youth involved in the farmer's market. Uh, Before I came over here, an example in Crawford County was that we worked with the county commissioners to plant flowers at the courthouse every year, and we built birdhouses that were hung on the courthouse lawn. So those are just some examples. So if you can think of something that 4-H youth are great workers, um, you know, and they get something out of it. Building those birdhouses, they had to cut the wood, screw them together, paint. Um, Those are some great life skills that they're getting. So we would love to partner with any of you. Um, If you can think of a project to better independence, we'd like to be a part of it. Um, I've met with the county commissioners here for Montgomery County, so I hope to get some of that started over here as well. Um, So I've talked a lot about 4-H. There's actually two parts to my job. The first part, obviously, is 4-H and to serve the 230 youth that are a part of the Montgomery County 4-H program. The second part of my job is to go into the schools and do school enrichment. Um, So I am in the schools for um, all types of projects that can range from going in with Barbara and we do some bread in the bag series where the kids actually mix the dough in a baggie and then bake it and get to take it home with them. Um, I really like to go in and do entomology, which is bugs. Um, It really holds kids' attention when they get to um, talk about squishing bugs and looking at all the bugs. Um, But since K-State is kind of founded in agriculture, I like to talk about the bugs that they see at their house, how they pollinate their gardens or their mom's flowers, or what bugs are good for us and what bugs are bad for us, what bugs eat mosquitoes, those types of things. Um, Our other agents go into the schools and do a wide range of things, ranging from crops to Jerry goes in with her tracks, cast of uh, animal tracks and pelts and things to show to the youth. So if you have, if you know, you know a teacher that would love for us to come in, um, we can do a wider range of programming, and we like to go into the schools as well, and that's part of our jobs. Um, and we'd like to reach as many youth as possible. Eventually, we'd like them to become a part of the 4-H program, but that's not necessarily um, always the end goal. Um, I will be around afterwards, and I would love to answer any questions, or if you have any ideas, I'd love to talk to you. The best thing that I can tell you to do is to find us on Facebook or our websites, because you're going to see all the pictures that we've been doing, all the things from camp, um, everything that we've been working on. Uh, We are the Wildcat Extension District 4-H group. Um, You can find us there on Facebook and see all the cool projects and animals and things. 
things that we've been doing. We did techniques of tailgating yesterday where we taught the kids food safety, um, how to properly pack a cooler to go tailgating. The meat should be on the bottom, those types of things. Then they actually got to prepare the food. And then we got to go talk to Sean Snyder, Bill Snyder's son. We got to tour the football rooms. They got to sit where the football players sit. Um, so we have some great opportunities for Montgomery County 4-H youth. Um, so I will be around afterwards. If I can answer any questions um, or direct you to our Facebook page, I would be happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I could feel, I could feel the attention that Carolyn was giving to Katie as she is the in charge of Farmer's Market. And my daughter's in the room who is a first grade teacher. When you started talking bugs, I could see the the uh, light bulb go on, so I'm sure we're going to get you plugged in in our community and get, get, um, get you on our Facebook pages. Um, our next speaker is going to visit with you about leadership independence. Um, one of the ways that we grow our community is by growing our leaders, creating leaders who create leaders who create leaders. And we're very proud of our leadership programs under the chamber, in particular our first leadership program, which is our sophomores in high school, and our adult leadership class, which, which will be starting up um, after the first of the year. And that um, will be, we take about the first 20 adults who apply for that class. We had a great, great class of um, young leaders that were in this, um, this year's graduating class. They are out in the community making a difference. And Gavin Webster was selected as their class representative, and he's here today to talk to you about leadership independence, in particular, their class project. Would you please welcome my soon-to-be son-in-law in 30 days, Gavin Webster. Well, good morning. Um, I am thrilled and honored to be speaking on behalf of the Leadership Independence class. I joked, I said there are you know, upwards of adults. I don't know if I consider myself adult yet, but got selected somehow. I said, you know, I can be most of your son, but you're going to pick me to speak up here this morning. And I said, I'd love to do it. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview. Lisa kind of told you a little bit about how the Leadership Independence class is formed. It's about 20 individuals from local businesses, if you don't know. Um, that get together and meet over the course of about eight months, and at the end of that eight months, we, we complete a project. Um, so before I get to that, I think that's the most fun thing to talk about um, this morning. I want to give you a little bit of an overview on how our process went um, in the eight times that we met together. So the first one um, is obviously the orientation, and a couple of highlights from that one. Um, we were quickly, after we were given um, kind of an over. Uh, an overview of what we were to expect for the eight months, um, taken with Ken Brown to visit uh, historic downtown and some of the historic buildings in Independence too. It was really neat to see how things were started, what things used to be, um, and what was formed here as Independence was, was beginning its roots. Um, you can see on the slide, you know, the, the back to the old days, back to what, it, or to what it is today, just a very neat overview of what was going on back then. We went back to the Booth Hotel afterwards, um, and after we got a little bit more comfortable with each other, we were given a taste of independence, and there were local businesses in town who each provided kind of their specialty, um, Brothers, Vintage, Uncle Jack's restaurants downtown, and we got to sample all different things. So it was a reminder of the neat things that we already have going on in independence and the soon things that we will learn more about as we go through this journey. Session two was It's All About the Team, and I unfortunately was not able to attend this session but heard quite a bit about it, as this was the session where a lot of us became a lot more comfortable with each other. Um, that being because there was a ropes course involved, a lot of sweat, a lot of, I think, feelings about how we cooperated as a team, um, and they got to know each other pretty well. So again, I, I had to miss this one, but to my knowledge, they met at the, the tennis clubhouse, um, got together. It was really more of a team building session day. They did, again, like I said, a low ropes course, not anything up high, but out in the park, um, and, and worked as a team getting to know each other. Session two was about, or session three, excuse me, was about civic engagement. Um, and to begin that day, we learned about learning styles. Um, and I found out that not everyone thinks the same way that I do. It'd be nice if that worked. And actually, I realized it's better that it doesn't work that way. Um, but all the way from the creative side to the analytical side and in between, um, it's all necessary for a good, successful forming team. Um, we finished before we went out for our pay it forward and the things I'm going to talk about on the screen um, with a magic wand activity. And this gets to what I'm going to talk about here in a little bit, but our project for independence. 
when we first applied to be in the group, we were, we were given an essay to write that said if you had a magic wand and could do anything with it in independence, what would you do? So this brainstormed, or was an hour, two hour long brainstorming session of what we wanted to accomplish in independence as a group. I'm gonna save all the ideas and things for the end when I'm talking about the project. We then went out and did a pay it forward activity. We were divided up into four different groups, given 50 bucks each and said, go find a way to pay it forward to someone in, in independence. Um, some of the examples, my group went out to Walmart, paid for a for prescription for a, for a young man. Um, we went and bought a board game and took it to a special education class at the middle school and played it with them. Um, there was a group who bought jackets and took them to, I think, Eisenhower to give to the students there. Someone bought cookies. Someone even prayed with an, a gentleman on the side of the road. Just a variety of different things that we all were doing out that afternoon, and it felt really good to be able to do something for someone um, that they could, in turn, do for someone down the road, too. Session four, Boo Coffeeville is the, is the initial thought to everyone's processing in this, but this was really eye-opening to know that we are a county together, Montgomery County, and that there are things that we do here very similar to Coffeeville. Um, we started with, actually, and this isn't on here, but a timeline that went back to, mm, I want to say, 1960, so about the first time that anyone in our class had been in Independence or Coffeeville, and we talked about um, what things were like back then, what they did growing up, and it went all the way through me, being 23, the most recent to the class, not necessarily the most recent to Independence, but the youngest, to see how things have changed over the time just in Montgomery County. Um, Shop Local was a presentation given to us by April Nutt and uh, Marcy Roberts that was timely just before Christmas to remind us that there are many things that you can get here in Independence. If we don't have it, Coffeeville might, and if they don't have it, we might. Um, it's really great to appreciate all the businesses that we have here in Independence. Um, economic development, at the time, uh, the hot topic was Tyson. It was just neat to see all of the ins and outs and what happens to get people or to get businesses to Independence. Um, they were able to give us an overview of, the, of that process. And then we finished up, uh, Gary Hogsett gave us a presentation called Bloom Where You Are Planted, which just reminded us to take advantage, put our skills, our specialties to use in independence and take advantage of the place that we um, get to call home. Session four, one of my favorites was all about the education. I grew up in independence and now looking back, I'm very fortunate to say that I attended the independent school system. Um, and since I've been there, they've all received a big facelift. In fact, that was right when I was getting ready to finish high school when that happened. So we started the day out at ICC. Um, Dr. Barwick, the president out there, gave us an overview of what things go on out there. Um, and even living here my entire life, I had not seen everything out there. I've been to certain spots but didn't realize the opportunity that students have out there, specifically now with the Fab Lab and the extension of everything that's happening um, out there as well. That afternoon, after speaking with the superintendent here, we went individually into four different groups, I should say, to the four different K through 12 schools. I had been at Eisenhower and Jefferson with Lane recently being there in the last year and a half. I'd been at the middle school, so the, actually the most one I hadn't been at most recently was the high school, even though I just recently graduated within the last five or six years. But again, things have changed even in the five years that I've been here, and in my opinion, for the, for the better, I would say. And it's really refreshing to see all the changes that have, that have, that have happened since being here and again, reminding me of my appreciation for the schools that we have here too. We came back, I think, afterwards, and the conversation that we had was, wow, I can't believe they do this. This is awesome. This is great. I hope everyone knows that this is the type of things that go on inside of our school system. So again, a great reminder of something else we have very fantastic to independence. Session six was all about the local businesses. Um, Dean and Jody Hayes, I believe, started off with the art of the question, we asked a lot of questions that afternoon to the businesses because a lot of us didn't realize all the ins and outs of the small businesses that we have in Independence. Um, one of them being Vintage. Richard Pereira came and spoke with us that day, gave us his story, and if you have not heard it, I won't spoil it. I recommend you do if you get the opportunity to. Just how he came to Independence, how his business was formed, and how he runs it. It's a very neat, very neat thing. That afternoon, we went and toured local small businesses. These are just a few of them. There are a couple that I, I couldn't remember and left off the list. Um, but Sectam, Demo Distributors, Hugo's, and Earthcare Products. I had no idea what went on at Sectam and Earthcare. I somewhat knew at Demo and Hugo's, but I learned and got to know what went on at Sectam, what goes on at Earthcare, and all the ins and outs, because you don't see those people outside of the business very often. They're all kept in, so we got to go behind the doors to see all of that, too. Again, another reminder of how lucky we are to have the businesses that we do in Independence. 
After that, we reconvened at Annie Mae's, and we did a small business scavenger hunt downtown. We were given about 12 or 15 clues that related to some sort of product or merchandise in the stores downtown. And there were two groups. The first to find and answer all the clues or find the products won. I was on that team. Woohoo! I think I won a $20 gift card instead of a $10 gift card. So that was, again, neat. But that, you can see that, that tag is one of the clues or one of the answers that we needed for one of our clues. I think that looks like it's inside Magnolia. Number seven was health and wellness. So that morning we met at St. John Clinic. We then quickly went out to the Independence New Healthcare System with Labette Health, got a tour of the fantastic new facility out there, came back. Dr. Hogsett met with us. The CEO of Wilson Medical Center met with us. Rakina Bot Botts met with us, who's with um, the Health for Life um, down the road. And again, even with the tragic lose loss of our hospital, have realized that we've kind of gained three different places and a lot of different healthcare choices for our community um, after that ha has happened too. Again, reminded of how neat and lucky we are to have that. That afternoon, we went out to Elk City State Park, did a little hike to increase our health, um, and actually got a tour of the cabin that they have out there as well. Didn't realize that that's something that's out there, um, but they, that they rent out on a monthly or when you want to during the summer as a, as a little vacation home almost, um, which is pretty neat. And the last session was industry and independence. So we toured SMP, Textron, and Hackney. Um, again, I was fortunate to intern at Textron a couple summers ago, so got to see that, but there, even since then, has been um, considerable changes to that too. Um, Hackney had no idea what went on out there. I now know. SMP, I now know how many people they fit into that building over there and how much goes on in that operation too. I think the neat part um, about those three businesses is that they employ about 1,200 people. And in the size of independence, you can, you can realize how big and important those businesses are to our local community. So again, you don't get to see the insides of those buildings very often. Um, so very fortunate that we got to have that opportunity. So now the fun part. Like I said, our project, after meeting for eight months, we got to see all these different things that led up to um, what do we want to do with, for independence. Um, the Magic Wand activity raised things like a microbrewery as an event. Um, the Park Street basketball courts, the St Scott Hastings basketball courts. There were several, uh, a, uh, another community garden was one of the ideas. Our, another one was the miniature golf course. That's what was picked. I'm happy to say a couple of the ones I've mentioned previously are being pursued by other organizations. So just sparking the idea has, has, um, has given, given way for other organizations to pursue it. Ours being, again, like I said, the miniature golf course at the park was to revitalize it, clean it up, hopefully get it looking nice before um, park opening. We're happy to say, and I'll say this for the end too, that the park opening, we got it done just in time for that too, so it was enjoyed that morning, even though it was cold and I think wet, um, but it was there to be enjoyed that morning for it. So to begin, the process, we have to obviously come up with how we're going to fund our project. You have to think about, oh, let's do all this. Well, how are we going to make the money for it and how are we going to get it? So there were three places that came from. Dr. Faye Bradley um, had given some money to Four Paws to be used directly for the gorilla and then for anything else after that was accomplished. Um, the Chamber has a leadership project fund that we tapped into a little bit and then Community National Bank also gave us some funds um, as well. So... The first part that we focused on was the eroding retaining wall that had grass, dirt, it was kind of falling apart. And while this is the less fun one to see, the, it's probably the hardest and it was the biggest task to tackle. This is afterwards. You can see that we had dug out all the railroad ties, replaced all of them with brand new. Those things are not light things to move around, I'll tell you that. I was, this is, I was on this project or on this committee and that, I was sore every day we worked on this. This took from the time we started, so probably two months before we finished, every you know, week or two we met, that's probably a little bit more, but four or five times that we met to get this, get this finished. So that was a big project that we're very proud of. You don't see that as much because it's on the back side of the course, but now when you go by, you realize that that's brand new and you don't have to worry about sliding off or the dirt sliding off of the road or of the golf course now. The next thing, maybe. Well, I'll speak to it as many maybe can get it switched over. Um, I believe on there is the plaque. So the podiums for each of the holes, each hole is, um, has a tie to something in Independence, as you can see. And they looked in the middle like that before. We power washed them and took, went out to the Fab Lab um, and re 
repurposed or, or created metal, sheet metal, that had a picture of whatever the hole revolved around, and then a little, little brief bio for each of those two. So that's one of the things I'm also most proud of, too. You go look at them, and they're very neat to see them as you go from hole to hole. And then the last thing is the painting that we did on, on the structures. So the pumpkin, before and after, we just cleaned up the paint, made it look a little bit nicer. The library, you probably have noticed, it kind of stands out on the end, is now a little bit cleaner. We repainted the wording, the lettering on there too. The rocket, we sanded down, repainted that as well. And the gorilla, you can see, was painted as well. The last thing that I didn't include on here too is the, is the bell tower. That was sanded down, redone. The neon light has been replaced. I think Drew Demo helped us with that too. But all the kind of the big highlights that hadn't already looked nice, and I'm forgetting one thing too, the little house on the prairie has the ceiling, or the, the roof of it was grass, and it was starting to cave in. We replaced all that too with a new roof too. So each of the big things we tried to, that needed some work, we, we revitalized as well. So very proud to be part of this project. Um, it was not my idea, but I was fully on board with it when I, when I heard about it too. Um, and it's one of the things I think that everyone can use um, very often. So again, very proud to be a part of this leadership class, very happy to have completed this project. Um, and we're, we're happy with everything and how it went. So thank you. Kidding. Good job. See, I told you they were a good class, accomplishing great things, making their mark on the community. So we are ready for our final speaker. It's always nice to have our city manager in front of us to give us a, a community update. As I always say, that this event is made possible with a co-sponsorship by the City of Independence. And it's a way for us to stay well informed about everything that's happening in our community. I know that Craig's door is always open. Um, if you have a, a concern or a care and you want to visit with him, please um, uh, go and find him and um, give him your thoughts and concerns. Um, but with that, he's going to give us a community update and tell us all the latest and greatest that are happening in our community. So please welcome our city manager, Craig Whitehead. It's on. Hear me now? No, 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 we have battery problems. There we go. Switch. Can you hear me now? Is that better? All right, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to stand over here. I've got some terrific slides I want everybody to see. I don't want to stand in the way. Um, it is a pleasure to be here uh, at First Friday. Uh, this is the third time I've done it. You may not recall. Uh, it was about this time last year, in July, first Friday in July, I had my first opportunity to come to First Friday. And I really enjoyed today, had some great speakers and learned a lot uh, what's happening. So we would like to share with you what's going on with the City of Independence. Uh, we really have a great staff and a lot of them are here uh, and uh, they take credit, they get all the credit for the things I'm going to talk to you about and show you. Uh, they really do work hard and, and move the city forward. I uh, want to quickly go through these uh, main things here, City Hall, Public Safety Building, Water Treatment Plant, Peter Pan Road, Community Input, Excellence Independence, some uh, projects and departments, and last but not least, financial information you can find online. Uh, the, the, the running thing is the, the staff doesn't think I can make it through in 15 minutes, but we'll give it a shot here. Uh, if I don't, then I owe them a steak dinner somewhere. <laughs> But before I do that, just I want a couple of thir uh, quick slides. Uh, it was about this time last year I was interviewing for the position of city manager here. And of course, you know, you go through the normal things, interviews, met with some community groups and so forth. But what you don't know is that the city commission at the time, Mayor Meyer, and Commissioner Hogsted, Commissioner Kuflish, they came up with some skill tests for the city manager candidate. I just want to quickly show you in case you didn't, didn't see them. They, they, they were rigorous, I'll tell you. They, they, these guys really put us through the paces. First one is show, we had to show how uh, that we could balance a lot of balls in the air at one time. <laughs> you know, that's 
Rockefeller had to show that we could multitask, juggle a lot of things at one time. So that was a tough one. Uh, thankfully, I, I worked for Cirque du Soleil for several years, so I was pretty good at this. <laughs> Same here. We had to show how, how you know, raise the high, the, the beam, see how hard we could get the bar. Uh, and uh, had a good crowd out that day to see the, see the thing. So independence really came out. Then we had to show good balance and strength. And uh, no, this is not Mike Borowitz, um, but uh, <laughs> um, maybe it's his uh, twin brother. I don't know. But that was a tough one. And the last one is the candidates all had to juggle apples. And the last one with juggling two apples, then they got an extra 10 points on their score. But, so anyway, that was, that was tough. We had to go through those skills tests. But they proved valuable, invaluable uh, in being city manager here. Anyway, back to reality. Uh, 1916 City Hall and the Public Safety Building. Where are we? Oh, wrong way. <laughs> we're still, we're still, there we are. You don't know that we've actually started construction, and we've got a construction crew out there now, uh, as you can see out there. And, and of course, our commission's really hands-on. They like to get out there and, and work. Of course, so, so there's Gary. Uh, right there, and then Commissioner Isusi there, Lewis is there, uh, and then of course Mayor Kaflish on the end there. So they, they get out and we're working hard uh, to get this City Hall project going. One of my favorite statements, you you got to go out on a limb sometimes because that's where the fruit is. Will Rogers. Public safety buildings again in City Hall. Here's what we've done. Commission just recently approved a uh, an agreement with an architectural firm to what we call seal the building, the external stuff, so no further water gets into the building until the major project's done. Uh, and that, again, the agreement has been approved to do that, to design that. Also, with the same architectural firm, an agreement to design the interior demolition of the building, taking out any non-historical walls and all the electrical and so forth and getting it ready for the next phase of uh, rehabilitating the building. Uh, and then in the future, hopefully, we'll have a soon a, either a special commission meeting or just have a commission meeting to discuss next steps uh, after that. Of course, how do, you pay for, how do you pay for all this? Well, we've got a, we've got a new plan we're really excited about. Uh, there are two proposals here. I don't know if you can read this, but uh, the guy saying, a show of hands then, will it be Mr. Borowitz's business plan or the funny little man who spins straw into gold? <laughs> and uh, you might think, well, obviously you take the straw into gold, uh, but Mike's plan's pretty good. Here's his plan. He's got the commission really excited over this project. I can't know if you can tell, but that tree growing up there has got, what did we say, $100 bills on that tree growing? So that's a pretty good plan. We got some new revenue sources for the city for the project, so we're excited about that. Here's kind of a timeline of uh, the two contracts I just mentioned. The, the architectural firm will do some field work and assessment uh, June 20th to 22nd. Then about, uh, it'll take about four weeks to do their assessment conceptual design report, and they'll hopefully get back to the commission on July 26th. And then the construction and bidding documents will be ready to go. Uh, it takes six weeks to prepare those, and they hope to present that final bid documents to the city commission on September 13th. So it takes a while. Uh, it's going to be about a month and a half or so before we get to the point of bidding those two projects, so the, the external and the internal demolition. Water treatment plan upgrade. Uh, we got some work to, to, to go there, as you can see. But we're moving forward on that. 90% uh, design project plans have been reviewed by the city. Uh, the, the plans will be completed once we get the final uh, location of new electrical service from Westar. We're so waiting on that. We should get that shortly, and then the design will be done. Uh, paying for the upgrades, uh, which is a low-interest loan through KDHE State. Uh, it's in process, and as it says there, we should have the uh, uh, agreement by the first part of July. So that's moving forward, uh, and it will fund the upgrades to the water treatment plant, as you know, much needed. Peter Pan Road. We don't get enough press 
sometimes, you know, we're not in the paper very often about city stuff. You know, so that's one reason we like to come to First Friday is to help get information out. But you may have heard of about the Peter Pan Road extension. Of course, the first project of the part was that's already completed was done as part of a state project. Uh, but then we got another grant, so we had to do a separate bidding process, and that's why there was an interruption between the construction between the first phase and now the second phase. And also, you may have heard there's a little gap there, of gravel road. It's dusty once in a while, but we had to leave it like that, or we could have spent $30,000 and put some temporary paving in there. Uh, but we decided the best course of action was to leave it gravel. Um, uh, anyway, we anticipate KDOT approval of the city to bid the, bid the project in late summer or early fall, so the gravel road will be there for a little while longer. Bear with us. I got some numbers for you. Number three, this is the number of uh, parties that are working with the Independence Housing Authority on purchasing and rehabilita rehabilitating downtown buildings. That's exciting to see that kind of work and activity uh, for downtown buildings. 10.4, now this is a really exciting one, for at least for a couple of us in the room. I get excited about it. Uh, 10.4 is the percent of increase in sales tax receipts for the month of May, this May, over May 2017. I think that's the first time I've seen a double-digit increase in any month. Uh, sales tax, as you know, is elastic. It goes up and down. But hopefully that's a, a good trend because the other number I have for you, 2.2, is the percent of increase in sales tax receipts year-to-date over the previous same period last year for five months. So we're up 2.2% 2 2 .2 for the year over last year. So we hope that trend continues. Because we, the one thing we've looked at, of course, is our sales tax is, uh, pays a major part of our general fund. And if that's flat, which is the way we budget it, you know, it's hard to grow. So um, hopefully that trend continues. So buy local. <laughs> Community input. This is really important. And we've talked about that, and it's been mentioned briefly here. Uh, just to quickly mention some things that we, we do as an organization. We have a police advisory committee that Chief Harrison works with. It also has a police traffic advisory committee. Uh, <clears throat> We have a citizens engagement group, which is uh, something we just started, uh, an idea from Joanne Smith, who we were talking about how we can get our message out in another way. And what this is is a group uh, that we invited 15, 16 residents from the community, various sections of the community, to come and talk to me primarily and our other city staff. And it's a way of sharing information. Community-based strategic planning. It's again one of my favorite cartoons, but this is kind of what it's all about. You know, the guy up in the window there saying, "Excuse me, sir, but what's the word on the street?" Well, that's what we're trying to find out as city staff. And what's the word on the street? What's happening out there in the community? What do we need to know? Uh, and then how can we answer your question? So that's kind of goes along with that, uh, all that outreach, if you will. And just quickly about community-based strategic planning. Uh, Lisa mentioned that briefly. It's very important. It's still going on. Uh, you can, again, go online, as she said, and fill out those surveys. Or you can get a paper survey uh, as well. But uh, just quickly, why, why we do it? You know, how do we focus our scarce resources? We have to be able to set priorities. And how do we engage our stakeholders? a unified vision of what matters most to the community. And that's what the community-based strategic planning is about. One of my favorite, uh, um, my, one of my favorite philosophers, Yogi Berra, if you don't know where you're going, you might, end up, you might not get there. So staking out that vision through a community planning is, is extremely important. I'm really appreciative that Commission supported that. We, you know, we hired a consultant to help run this, uh, and also at the advisory committee, they appointed nine-member advisory committee that's running. It's not the city that's running this. It's all through the advisory committee and the consultant. 
So it's all community input. And when you have that plan, uh, you can make critical decisions. You can put them into context. You know what your priorities are. You can make those recommendations that are reasonable, prudent over the long term. You're looking long term, at least a five-year outlook. Another thing we're uh, working through in the city of, city of uh, independence is what we call excellence independence. This is kind of our culture shift, our culture change. We're really trying to emphasize a new, a new way of doing things in terms of excellence. Not to say that we aren't doing a great job now in a lot of areas we are, but one of our beliefs, strong beliefs, core values is continuous improvement. Somebody mentioned magic wands. Well, I know where they are, so <laughs> you need some magic wands. That, sometimes that takes. You think you just get a magic wand and wave it and, and you can change your organization or culture. It does take time. Uh, but we're working through that. And this is our target. Most of our core values. Our target is delivering excellence. This is how we do it with our core values. Integrity, commitment, excellence, and teamwork. Of course, we're talking about excellence uh, right now, and I just want to kind of focus on that for a minute. Uh, I won't read through all this, but this is our uh, excellence independence. We call it excellence, the power of quality. Just a couple of things I'd like to hi highlight in there. Uh, I just got shifted around. Uh, we are passionate about people, process, and service. And innovation, continuous improvement, and an intense focus on customer needs. Departments, as I mentioned, the departments have done a great job, and they're all dedicated. I, I could take an hour to go through all the stuff that they gave me to review. But I ask them, what, you know, in the past year, uh, what have you been doing? What's happening? So just a, this is just a few. One thing we want to highlight uh, in finance, M Mike Borvitz uh, uh, went through a new program, the way we do water shutoffs. Uh, last year, our average shutoffs uh, were about 105 a month. And it's not fun to get your water shut off. We don't want to shut people's water off. We'd rather have them come in and pay their bill, and we don't, so we don't have to go out and shut the water off. It saves us time. So with the new process, uh, so far this year, our average is down to 42. Wow. So it's been much more efficient and effective in doing water shutoffs. And, and I say Mike and his finance staff uh, put that together. EMS, fire, public safety, uh, automation again. We, have, we do grass environmental uh, inspections. The fire department does that. Uh, and now it's all paperless. They go out with a tablet, take a picture of the yard, Pull up the address, fills all the data in. It's, it's quite slick and sends it back to the home, the home office, and, and it saves a lot of time. Uh, right now, all downtown buildings are currently being inspected for uh, structural integrity and prevention. Prevention is the key in a fire department. You really should put money there. You put money putting out fires, but you really need to put a lot of money in preventing it. Um, and finally, building inspections, another paperless thing that was same same type of thing. We've got them on the building inspector just has a tablet and go out and, and fill out uh, a, on his tablet, take a picture of any structure or whatever, and it automatically shoots it back to the office, the home office, and it's great. So it's saving a lot of time and being able to do a lot more, be more productive. Oops. Parks and Zoo, isn't that gorgeous? I don't know if you've been out and seen the carousel since it's been it's been rehabbed. It is gorgeous. Uh, and they did a lot of work. It took uh, a lot of work to do that. Uh, this, uh, this park staff. And uh, just so you know, uh, they tore it completely down. They had to send the hub and, and so forth to get redone. It cost $36,000 to, uh, to bring that carousel to the state of Cinderella, which is running great. Uh, I want to note that some local companies donated time and materials to help get that done and, and bear, on a timely basis. When we had a consultant here to get something done, we needed to put it together. They had to go right down SECAM or wheel welding. Yeah, we can do it right now. They, they jumped in. It was great. So we appreciate that. Uh, talking about the consultant, the park cemetery staff, they assembled that carousel, carousel, put it back together, and it's running great, as I said. The center hub and the gears should last another 30 years, so it'll be great. Another, uh, uh, continue to be a great addition in the park. Uh, the train went through some rehabilitation as well. 
Uh, we spent about three thousand dollars just on the engine in the uh, in the lead car. Uh, we had to send that off to I don't know if it was Indiana or Ohio somewhere, Pennsylvania. That was close. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we weren't sure we were going to get it back in time, completely refurbished for the train, but we did. They got it, got it in and got it running for the first day. Uh, and while that was happening, uh, we did some track rehabilitation. You know, track is it's, it's just like a railroad, a little smaller scale, but uh, thanks to Mike Borowitz and connections with Watco uh, Railroad, their track engineers, I don't know what they're exactly called, but they're professionals in track track laying, came out and helped uh, us with issues on laying track. Put a lot more gravel, angled, angled just right on the turns. Uh, they really helped, helped the, uh, us do that, so we appreciate that. So the train's running, train's running great. I, I rode it uh, a couple of weeks ago. Had a good time. I recommend it. We've got to raise that price, though, up there, Barbara. It's, <laughs> it's a quarter of a ride now. The carousel is only five cents, so you can ride it all you want. Uh, police, really quickly, again, from police, I, I could have had three pages uh, from police, but just quickly, our animal control officer, Charlie Benedict, he received the Kansas Association of Chiefs of Police Silver Valor Award for saving or provi provi prolonging a, a life. Sergeant Christina Johnson received the Glass Ceiling Award from the National Association of Women Law Enforcement Executives for being promoted to sergeant. And the Independence Police Department earned a AAA Traffic Safety Award for the community in recognition of our emphasis on traffic safety. Uh, since February of 2017, the Independence Police Department has awarded commendations to nine officers, one deputy, and one citizen for extraordinary service to the community, and also life-saving awards to a dispatcher and one officer. We have great people in the police department. Police departments these days seem to be maligned a lot, but we really have some great people serving the community here. Public works. Street resurfacing, we're actually gonna do some. Uh, the main one we're gonna do is Fifth, excuse me, Fifth Street to Oak to City Line. Somebody said that was Thunder Road, and I didn't know if they meant Robert Mitchum or Bruce Springsteen. I didn't know which one they were referring to, but. I guess it's neither. I don't know if they ran booze down that line, whatever. Um, and the airport, we just opened bids uh, the other day uh, for uh, the seal coat on runway 422, which should begin in late, or late August, early September. Uh, key thing here is uh, it's 90% grant funded. And it's a 130, almost $138,000 project, which we got very good bids for that. But it's 90% federal grant funded, so we're not, we had actually had criticism about spending money at the airport. Well, it's critical for the, the, the businesses out there, as you may know. Recycling, of course, we, uh, I think you all know we started recycling uh, on Tuesdays from 11 to 1. It's steadily grown e each week, so that's, that's going well. Finally, talk about financial information online. Um, I, if you're not aware, I want to make you aware, and I have some handouts on the table uh, to, to show you where you can get financial information on the city. If you have any questions, there's the operating budget, there's the capital improvement program there, there's the citizen's budget, which is a summarizing of the operating budget. Uh, there's also quarterly, what I call quarterly operating budget reports. Uh, right now on the website, you have a third and a fourth quarter 2017 and that by next week, you'll have the first quarter of 2018 operating budget reports. That gives a budget to budget where we stand, has some nice graphs and so forth. And then we're posting the quarterly treasury reports, which gives just a fun, kind of a fund balance of each fund, how much, where the fund started, how much was spent, and what the balance of the fund is. And then, last but not least, uh, we have the 2016 Audit Corrective Action Plan reports. Uh, as you know, the 2016 audit had major issues, uh, which we are correcting and working through, and we uh, give a, a report on, the, on our progress in meeting um, that corrective action plan to the commission on a monthly basis. And that's what the report is that you'll see on the website. So if, 
Lots of financial information is there. And again, if you have any questions, you certainly can call me or Mike or what's already your department heads if you have questions about the, the budget, their budget, or the city's budget online. But anyway, I, I do have some handouts that you can go through. Uh, here's the links. When you go to the web page, at the bottom of every page, it has a quick links. And just look for budget documents or financial reports. Or under the heading, you can look at government, departments, finance records, and so forth. And last but not least, of course, if you can't read that, I'll read it to you. There's the king sitting up there looking at that chart with the line going up. We're projecting a rally in the fourth quarter, after which we'll all live happily ever after. <laughs> That's our goal, right? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We always enjoy a good report from the city, and I appreciate personally all that you're doing to lead us in the right direction, Craig, and um, uh, your efforts to promote excellence, and, and, uh, and I ditto what you say about um, having great department heads and a great police department and a great fire department, and we're very appreciative of everything, Barb, that you do out in the park and the zoo. And again, I just welcome everyone to um, always go to City Hall, find a commissioner, find a city manager, and, um, and visit with them about your concerns and your ideas and, um, and work to make independence um, an even better place than it is. So we have a few minutes for a few shout outs. We're going to use Craig's mic down here. And so I know Virgil's here and Bruce is here. So we'll let those two gentlemen go first. If anybody else has a shout out, line up behind them. We'll come on over here. And Virgil, if you want to go first, we'll do some shout outs and then um, we'll wrap everything up. Go ahead. All right. Thank you, Lisa. I will be very brief, less than 60 seconds. When I come to an event like this, I see a lot of the movers and shakers in the independents in Montgomery County area, and I would encourage you to continue to be movers and shakers. Bill White, the realty, congratulations on 40 years. That's pretty special. Several counties in southeast Kansas have been working together on an event that's going to be a big event. It is being done with excellence, being done first class. Montgomery County is involved. Actually, Montgomery County is taking the lead on it. It was an idea that came to us in Montgomery County. So we're taking the lead on it. June the 16th, you will want to be in Parsons. Now it's a regional event. Parsons is about less than an hour drive from most of southeast Kansas, so that's the reason that location was selected. But we have secured the presence of the four leading Republican nominees, or candidates, I should say, for governor. Uh, they will all be there. It was kind of a challenge to get all of them to agree to be there, but they will all be there as well as most of the congressional candidates from the 2nd District, as well as several statewide candidates from across the state of Kansas. So in one location, you can get up close and personal, shake hands, ask questions of candidates who will be running for governor, Congress, and other statewide offices. Main reason we're doing this is two things. One, to educate voters, but two is to promote Southeast Kansas to the leaders of the state of Kansas so they will understand that Southeast Kansas is an extremely vital part of the state of Kansas. So that's the reason we're doing this first class. There will be no charge for the event. We've been working very hard to raise funds to pay for the event. We're continuing on that. But I would urge you to put that on your calendar. It's open to the public. Whether you're a Republican or not, we would invite you to be in Parsons June the 16th. There's some flyers on the table over there, as well as I've got some myself. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. You can have that. Bruce, come on up. Hello, I'm Bruce Peterson, I'm chairman of the Astra Arts Festival. That uh, happens every two years. This will be our third one. Um, July 6th, 7th, and 8th um, <clears throat> will be. Um, it's really good in that we're probably, for this time, really able to go out how it was partly envisioned to be sort of a downtown event. Friday, July 6th, is a pianist, um, a Tulsa-based pianist, uh, Baron Ryan, who will um, perform at the Presbyterian Church. Then Saturday, July uh, 7th, um, through multiple um, businesses downtown, both our art galleries, um, throughout the day, there will be um, musical events and um, artistic events within the uh, downtown uh, storefronts and the art galleries. And later that day, there will be a, a block of the 100 uh, um, East Myrtle. Um, there will be a stage set up, and there will be um, further outdoor events that Saturday evening. This is um, sort of in front of the VFW. Um, we'll have the uh, St. Andrews um, 
um, ice cream there, and we'll have other vendors. We'll have our artists, local artists there on, on vendors for Saturday. Then Sunday, uh, July 7th, there will be sort of two, I guess, the sort of family events. There will be a, an organ concert with a silent movie uh, Sunday afternoon. Sunday evening, a family um, magic show with Pete Walter Scheid, family-based uh, Sunday evening out at the college. And it is... Um, We'll be getting lots of information out on that. And um, like I say, it's our hope to um, bring it even more downtown for this uh, arts festival. Thank you. Thank you. Tabitha? Come on in. Good morning. Tabitha with Independence Main Street. And I just want to invite you guys out. We're going to start our first Thursday events of the month for June, July, and August. So our first Thursday will be the 7th. And we have some sidewalk vendors coming, a couple of food trucks. We're blocking off the 200 block of Penn. And we will have um, John Turner there with some karaoke, some organized line dance lessons. Um, oh, and the farmer's market will be there in its regular spot on Myrtle. So we just have all kinds of fun events from 5 to 8 on June 7th. So we hope that you will all come out and join us. And then again, it'll be July 5th, I'm not, I think, and then That's August right. 2nd. So please come out and support our downtown with our first Thursday events. Thank you. Come on over. Alan Herzberg, representing the Pregnancy Center. Some of you know that we give diapers, we give uh, formula, little kids clothes. Uh, last year had $77,000 expenses. As one of our two major fundraisers, Ford Motor Company is going to let you test drive one of their cars next Saturday, Hugo's parking lot, and there'll be kids' events and other things there. I guess you can leave the kids while you drive or something. <laughs> but anyway, you Chevy drivers, you can drive a Ford for a morning. <laughs> 11 to 4 at Hugo's. Thank you. Thank you. Get that on the calendar. Hi, I'm Kathy Shepard, and I wanted to talk to you about a volunteer opportunity here in Independence. We are looking for a coordinator for the commodities distribution here in Independence. It takes place at First United Methodist Church. And the coordinator, it's about 15 hours um, every other month that you spend on it. So it's not a big commitment, but it does take somebody organizing. The volunteers are already there in place to help with that, but we just need somebody to organize. And so if you're interested in that, get a hold of me. The next commodities distribution will be June the 2nd, and you could have the opportunity to see exactly what they do. Thank you. That's all right. We'll get it on there. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming. And before we adjourn, I just want to say congratulations again to Bill White Real Estate on your uh, significant milestone of 40 years. Thank you for your commitment to our community. And thank you to Coffeeville Regional Medical Center for the great health care that you provide to independents and your support of independents in the chamber. We appreciate that. Um, in particular, I'm enjoying the women wellness program that you're having. So um, we want to give that a plug. And um, uh, just encourage you to continue to come to First Friday, enjoy all that our community has to offer. So take those community calendars with you, put all of those activities on your calendar, and have a great weekend. Thank you for coming. <laughs>